here today. Um, I enjoy coming to events like this to talk to local business owners because I feel like digital marketing is the avenue to really get your business out there. And so what I'm gonna do today is kind of give you guys some a high level overview, of some good tips and tricks of really what you can do to make a strong online presence for your business here in the Huddle community and in general online. So digital strategies connecting the community to local business. Clicker is not working. See if there's another <coughs> ability to go down or up. Yeah, sorry about that. One second, everybody. Um, let me just introduce myself because I'm gonna do that on the next slide anyway. So like, like they said, I have been with uh, uh, various retail organizations, Best Buy, Dick's Sporting Goods. Uh, most recently, I was at the Army and Air Force Exchange. There you go. Do you mind uh, changing as we go? Yeah, I'll just see here. Okay, all right, great. Um, so yeah, the next slide. So a little bit about me again. Two decades of experience, uh, primarily in retail, the Army and Air Force Exchange. My most recent position, I was our Vice President of Digital Marketing. Uh, Fort Hood, not far from here, right? Um, we also have uh, Carlisle up in Fort Worth. Any Air Force or Army base, there is a retail called the Exchange. Uh, is there any, any military members here or veterans by chance? Thank you very much for your service, by the way. Uh, very uh, much appreciate the armed forces. And so the exchange may be familiar with who we are. Uh, I, I call it like we're like a Target or Walmart, right? We, uh, we sell everything from Apple, North Face, outdoor, outdoor patio furniture to appliances. So that was my most recent position. Uh, what I liked about those, our core audience was the military and the company was very community focused, which is a big deal to me. Um, I'm also a professor at UTD in Dallas and TCU uh, in marketing. And then, uh, yes, my education, I uh, went to the University of North Texas, I got my MBA from Amherst and Garland, and my uh, doctorate from the California Intercontinental University. It's a mouthful. <laughs> but but, but that's, the, that's the professional side. I'm a family man at heart. I've got a daughter who's 11. I've got two stepsons, one is 23 and one is 22. One just graduated from college in marketing. He's looking for that full-time job. And the other's living with us right now trying to get through college. And, we're ready for that, right? So, uh, my wife Melissa is here today. Uh, she's taking fun pictures of me. We've been married 13 years. Uh, so, you know, I'm just a family man at heart, though. While I enjoy professing, I enjoy speaking, and I enjoy consulting industry, I'm really just a family man at the end of the day. A lot like you guys, just we want to do good things for our family, work hard, and provide for our families. Uh, for fun, I like to go to concerts, travel when I can, play the drums, and then what I really like to do the most is spend time with my wife watching reality TV. Aww. 90 Day Fiance is one of our favorite shows. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next slide, please. So that's a little bit about me. So agenda of topics. Uh, what we're going to do is talk about how to connect with the community, right? What that means from a digital marketing perspective, and primarily content. Then we'll talk about how to do that through online opportunities and how to get found locally through search engine optimization and search, Google search, Google ads, and then the importance of social media engagement. But by the way, there are so many other digital tactics out there. So with the time I have, I try to pick the top ones that really do matter to a local business where you can easily get started to start an online presence with digital strategy. There are a wide variety of techniques out there that go beyond this, but for today, here's some of the top ones. And at the end, questions and answers if you have any. Next slide, please. So priority one, know your value to the local community. So what does that mean? You already have a business for a reason, right? You serve your community, you serve your customers, for that product or service that you offer. But also, how do you connect with the community from a sponsorship perspective? How you can you know, go to events are all things that matter, but how do you just talk to your community online is what I'm really talking about today. Content is key, as they say. So what is the, you have to answer these questions and be able to articulate them in a manner on a consistent basis with your community to strengthen your brand, your reputation amongst those in the area. The first question is, what is the value your business brings to the local community, like I just said? It doesn't mean you have to do things uh, you know, to sponsor every event out there. I'm sure the local schools love that, and that's great. But it's more so, though, what are you doing also just to represent Huddle, right? What are you doing to represent the culture of the city? We'll talk more about that in a minute. What does your product or service do to not only bring value to customers, but help define Huddle as a community? Like I said, how do we engage with the culture of the community, right? How do we have a presence at that wonderful uh, music event you have coming up? next month, I believe. Other things we can just stand out, at least promote those events, right? You don't have to necessarily have to have uh, a table there. That's great, but digitally talk about it. Get into the community of events that we're talking about here at the Chamber of Commerce and be a representation of the community. Talk about that through your social media, your website. That gets customers to be, really be aware that you're part of the community. Develop the brand identity that aligns with your values, beliefs, and those of the local community. You have a value system, right, of an organization, of your company. You know, it's your beliefs, it's your values. Bring that into your marketing. Bring your personality into your marketing too with the local community because that's what customers 
locally are looking for, right? They want to stand out. You want to stand out with your customers as if you have an identity that connects with a local area. The next slide, please. So what is it all about? I learned this on my way up here not too long ago. The hippo story is fantastic. I think you guys have a great uh, story to tell. It's uh, apparently everybody has to have one to live here, right? Do I got an honorary one when I did today? You can ship it to my home in, uh, in Dallas. But I think that this is a great story, right? The train coming down and then the hippo getting loose. But then you made that part of your community and it stands out, it stands out well. So let's, let's just embrace that. Let's talk about that story if you want. Let's talk about how you know the, the, the culture of the Huddo Hippo is a part of your organization and you embrace that through the local schools, the local community events, stuff like that. But that is a great story to tell that stands out amongst any other town in the area, right? Talk about that, bring that to your organization, to your business, whatever that means, right? Having the symbol of the, of the hippo or just bringing that heritage to what you're doing. That's what stands out amongst other services or companies in the area or in general online, especially, right? Huddo's known for the hippo, we'll bring that to your business as well. So I thought that was fascinating. Next slide. I took this from the, uh, I didn't build this, I give credit to the uh, Area Chamber of Commerce website, but I think what's important here is know your community, right? I just got wind of a large organization, electronics organization coming up 15 minutes up the road, right? What is that gonna bring? People, consumers. So look at the history of where you've been and where you're going. So one of the things about marketing that's very important is know your audience, right? Know the local community, what are their demographics? What are the income levels? And a lot of you already know that because you live in the community, have friends, family, all that. But the more that we know about the more emergence of the population coming, the more we need to prepare ourselves. And right now is the time with the influx of all these new people who are gonna live in the area to work at that large electronics organization um, and other growth areas of the area, build that presence now. It starts online now with that organic growth of a foundation of a strong online presence. And I'm gonna talk about websites a little bit, but more importantly, how to get found online here in a minute. So I look at all these statistics and I say, look, there's a lot of good things to know here, right? The 18 plus population has grown from 2010 to 2021, more adults in the area, more graduates for college degrees, right? Uh, how many people are in certain age groups? I mean, these are the good things you do in marketing to build a good understanding of your audience and how to market <laughs> to the different demographics, right? Those are certain age groups versus others, those with certain income levels, it's very important to understand how do you fit into the lifestyle of people based on these demographics. So there's a whole thing called customer segmentation you can do with this. But Huddle is, and I love this quote that's from the website. Huddo is part of the regional tech hub while also maintaining the charm of suburban life and historic community. It's that balance of marketing that I think you guys, as local business owners, can do to keep that heritage alive. Right. So no matter if that large organization is coming or not, which they are, I know, um, Keep that heritage alive, keep that, that, that spirit alive of what Huddle's about, even with the growth of all these people who will eventually come and live here for the growth of the area. Next slide, please. So priority number two, priority number one is know how you connect with your community. Talk about the Huddle story in your marketing, in your content. But then how do you do it though? How do you get online and get found is critical for a local business. There's so much competition out there, right? Amongst each other, we'll say, in the industries we work in, but also just for the ability for new people who are moving here to say, look, where's the local repair center for this? Where's the local community center for that? Where's the local restaurants that I want to find? New people who come, especially those who aren't familiar with the area, are gonna go on search nine times out of 10 to find what they're looking for. So these are statistics. I think it's important to understand how important it is to be found locally. 46% of all Google searches are looking for local information. 72% of consumers that did a local search visited a store within five miles. This means that with that search ability to find that local facility in the right way with good information are going to go find what they're looking for and actually you know, get off the internet and go physically to a store presence. So if you have a physical environment where you want customers to come in, use the digital channel to engage with them to come into your physical location. You can do non-digital marketing, absolutely you can. But the struggle with that is most people today start online first and then end up in the physical presence later. 97% of people learn more about a local company online than anywhere else, like I said. That's the first place any of us are gonna to go to to learn about a local company. 88% of searches for local businesses on a mobile device either call or visit the business within 24 hours. You know, mobile, we're all on mobile. Your customers are on mobile. The local community is all mobile. And if we find something we like, and we wanna you know, call and get in, uh, information about quickly, we're gonna be on our phone and call that number right away. Right, because our, our ability to do that fast is what we want to be able to capture with people on their mobile device. The next slide, please. 
More stats. And I'm a big stats guy because I, I think it helps tell the story about how important it is and how we, we, get, we start looking at ourselves as a local business to get in this arena. 61% of mobile searches are more likely to contact a local, uh, it's the same thing. Sorry, go to the next one. 78% of local based mobile searches result in an offline purchase. So we start with mobile search, but then we go to that offline environment, right? Which a lot of our businesses, that's what, we, that's what we want. We want people to find out about us on a mobile search. And what I mean by mobile too, it doesn't mean they're just at home. They're literally out and about, right? We're out and about on a Saturday afternoon, running errands, and then somebody pops in our head, oh, I meant to go get this the other day. I meant to go check this out. So they're gonna stop, we all do it, right? At the gas station or on the side of the road, hopefully not doing it while you drive, um, <laughs> disclaimer. But you're looking and you're in, the, you're in the moment, and it's all about being in the moment with mobile. It's capturing customers at the right time, potential customers in the moment, right? So that's what it's all about. The near me or close by type search grew more than 900% over two years, and this is from 2022. So what happened also is what do we have happened because of the pandemic? Everything shut down. Maybe your business was still thriving, but you were having a challenge getting people to actually come to your local business. Well, people were using the near me function because they didn't want to drive further than they had to to get the bare essential, the bare necessities or essentials, or they needed the repair, they wanted to obviously find something local because most people do want to support local business. So that near me function on Google has grown 900% in the last couple of years. Uh, so yeah, the next slide please. So what is it all about? Search engine optimization, okay? It's SEO is what it's called. And really what it is, it means optimizing your website to be at the top of what people search for relative to your business, okay? You want to be as high up on that search results as possible. The first thing I'll say though that's important, which I won't go into too much detail about, is you need a website. If you don't have a website, you need one, okay? Any business today, large or small, needs a presence online. And a website's part of that. And there's all these things about how to keep your website up to date, good content, but that's for another day. But once you have that up and running, to be found online, you must practice making sure that you're found on search. Um, it's usually Google, we have Bing, you have Yahoo, but really Google's what we're primarily talking about. The goal is to get organic traffic. This means there's uh, opportunity to not even have to pay. There is a paid version, which we'll talk about, but pay and invest in just having natural traffic come to your website, getting people who search keywords around, you know, repair or, you know, local Italian restaurant or, you know, things that they want to see in keyword searches and you want to rank as high as possible. And normally what most people do is have their location settings on, right? So you don't have to worry about them typing in put up. Most people will want to search near me, like I showed, and then search their keywords after that. But this takes practice, it takes time, it takes analytics a little bit. You have to do your research with this, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But the goal again is to rank as high on Google search as possible to, run, to, to rise above your competition, right? How many of us, you know, when we search for something online, go to the second, third, fourth page of results? Not many. You know, 80% of people don't go to that second page. They want to go down and scroll as far as they can, and for a lot of local businesses too, it's the ones that stand out the most at the very top of the results that most people click on and potentially do business with. Next slide, please. So why is it important? It's a powerful tool to enhance your online presence. It involves strategies to improve your website's visibility on search engines and make it easier for local customers to find you. Um, local SEO helps businesses appear prominently in local search results. So again, a lot of customers are going to put their location settings on, but even if they don't, like the location settings not on, and they type in Huddle, you still want to appear at the top of the page because people are going to look for local services in their area. What that effectively can drive more foot traffic to or phone calls to your business or website visits. So it's actually a great way to get people to even come to your facility. Once they even know who you are, and they say, look, you're only 0.5 miles away, I may not even go engage with your website. I'm just gonna go straight to your business and come talk to you in person because that, you know a lot of people want to still conduct their business in person, but they want to know where you are first is super important. Uh, next slide, please. So here's an example, and I picked just a Huddo AC repair search term, right? Very simple search term. And you know maybe one of y'all in this room are own one of these businesses. I just use it as an example. But here's what matters, though. You want to have this content up to date. Okay, this may sound simple, but in the reality of things though, I've experienced it where I live, I live in Mansfield, Texas. I'll call, I think recently we were looking for some repair to our home, a handyman, and the phone number wasn't working. The hours of operations, I called during the hours of operations, they're like, no, we're closed. So here's the thing, this content, having a Google business profile is critical to your success. Having your hours of operations up to date, right? Having, you know, good Google reviews, which we'll talk about in a minute is important, right? Category, and if you can, Rank as high as you can in this default view of people land. Now look, 
there are more businesses and you're gonna be have you know others in the area kind of compete with you down here. How do you rank here is based on an algorithm in Google. Your job is not to understand the algorithm, right? It's a very you know computerized thing. But what you can do is again make sure your content's up to date, your phone number's up to date, and one thing that you can drive is Google reviews. Incentivize your customers to leave a review. Give them a discount. Give them some kind of you know gift card, or just ask. You know, hey, if you're happy with our service, don't fill out a survey on my website per se. Put it on Google because I think you guys understand how important it is to have as many reviews as possible. And the more reviews you have, Google's looking at that from a uh, category perspective. And here in this instance, air conditioner repair, and saying, look, those with the more higher reviews, we're going to put at the very top of our results because Google's going to think. That's the most authentic, best opportunity for customers because Google wants to give the best results at the top of the page, okay? Now, even if, even if you're below, it doesn't mean you have a bad business. It just means there's something working in the algorithm to go higher. What you can do is, again, keep your content up to date, make sure it's relevant, and also make sure you have a good website that's up to date as well, using great content, local community pictures, images, really clean layout, and then make sure your, your reviews are intact and manage those reviews. And then, by the way, use those reviews to your, to your benefit. Have customers be your testimonial. Have your customers that you've already had, loyal customers, be your advocates and broadcast that all over the internet. So that's the default view from an organic perspective. Now there's ways to pay, which we'll talk about in a minute, but if you can at least rank on this page somewhere and at least in the top results here, you're in good shape. Next slide, please. So again, Results, content of importance for local businesses. These are the things that matter. Google ratings, build it, encourage it, and leverage it for credibility. It shows credibility. Um, you know, the 10 years plus in business is also a good thing, but that's just based on pure nature, how long you've been in business. But you can have a two-year-old business and still have, you know, four or 500 reviews, four and five stars, and still rank pretty high, because again, that's what matters the most. Um, but, and, and make sure it's people that you really, you know, trust are gonna leave a good review. I mean, that's part of it too. I mean, anybody can leave a review, but you know, we want there to be substance in those reviews. You know, really descriptive, you know, uh, uh, engagement on there where people had really felt about your business. Um, contact info up to date, hours of operations, and your website. Again, if you don't have one, get one. And it's not, it doesn't cost a lot to have uh, to operate a website. It really doesn't. At least a basic website. Next slide. So that is from the very top default view when you get to the maps. Now, I show the, the example of the maps, by the way, too, which is great, right? So we can click on that and go straight to your location. So just make sure you have a good Google business profile, contact up to date, and people will use that a lot to find you on the maps area. Now this is just below that. If you see that more businesses, that's what I was showing before. But then here's everything else below it, right? This goes on for a while. And at the very bottom, you have page two, three, four. You want to, at least for the most part, if you can't get in that top section, land on that first page to the best of your ability. Now, these are the keywords I use was uh, Hutto AC Repair. Part of it is those, there's gonna be a variety of keywords that your customers are going to use to find you. Air conditioner repair, AC repair, repair for the air conditioner, right? There's variations of keywords. So some of that takes time to analyze and assess. Um, and you can use that with also some technology to help you with that as well. But understanding how important that is, is critical because you wanna land here, right? At least somewhere on the top pages. When you get here too, you also manage the content that's on the search results. You want a good story to tell about who you are in these very short, you know, uh, subtext here is what it's called. You know, we provide top quality customer service and excellent workmanship to make sure you're comfortable at home at all times. That's good. Something that talks about, you know, who, you, what you stand for, what you're doing, the, the most trusted this. If you have an award that you won, talk about that here too. Make sure this content really stands out. Nothing basic, right? You want something that really stands out. These companies are doing a pretty good job at that. Okay, so this is what you control. You control this. If you have a promotion going on, put that here too, right? We're giving 20% off to all new customers this month, whatever. Get people to want to click on yours versus somebody else. So again, rate high, and part of the algorithm is a great website, okay? So Google's gonna look at both your keyword relevance, as in what keywords are driving people to this content here, but how good is your website, right? Are people going to it, engaging with it? They're gonna track that through the search. So a great website plus great content here, and great understanding of what keywords, Drive people to your website is the overall value, okay? Um, at the end of the day too, just get people to even understand and be relevant to who you are. It's about awareness at some point too. You're not gonna get instant business all the time. Let's be straight up with that. But you will get relevance. You will get people to be aware of who you are, okay? So let's just say they go to a company X and they had a poor experience, okay? They go to yours next because you were the next 
relevant results and they remember who you were the next time they needed your business. That's also what it's about. Some of it's passive marketing. Digital marketing is not always instant gratification. That's not always instant results. It's passive, it's, it's creating awareness. It's creating a brand image for your local community. And at some point, someone needs your business. If you stand out with this good content, a good website, and you rank high, you'll be, you'll be remembered, okay? So that's really important to understand that. Next slide, please. So SEO best practices, again, optimize your online presence. Have an online presence, period. First off, let's just say we need one, okay? It's, it's very important. Have a, have a standard website at least with some good content. Have a social media presence, which we'll talk about in a minute. At least have a destination to go to. So that's the first place a lot of people go is a search and, see, and find out who you are through search on a website. Ensuring your business information is up to date and claiming and optimizing your Google My Business listing for better local visibility. Like I said, build your Google My Business profile, get all that content in there. Keyword research for local marketers. Identifying keywords that local customers use when searching for products and services like yours. Um, some of it's pretty straightforward, air conditioning repair, AC repair, but maybe there's other things that they look for that you know because of your business. You are the mastermind of your own craft. You know how customers think, you know what customers say, and how customers think and what they say is how they search, okay? It's no different than them coming up to you at the counter and asking you a question. How they ask that question is literally, most times, some variation of it, how they're going to search. Or if you don't know, ask your customers, how did you find us today? Do a survey about that. Or ask customers over time, if they start saying, look, I found you on Google search, how did you find us? What did you say? What did you search for? And use that information to your benefit for future customers. Because I guarantee you, 90% of the time, your customers all think alike as far as how they found you online. Localized content creation, again, also make sure you're developing content that resonates with your local audience. And the next slide, I think, has a good example of that. Well, it will in a minute. Uh, so that's, that's the free stuff. I call it free. It takes work. It takes time, right? The website may cost money, but the SEO, search engine optimization work, is, doesn't cost anything. It just takes time. It takes, uh, I'll be honest, patience a little bit to see the results happen. But over time, you'll start seeing your website crawl up on Google search results. You'll start seeing more people visit your website because of taking these tactics and really getting into it, spending the time to evaluate and do it. You may say, may not, may not have the time. Well, there's ways to learn how to do it. There's also ways to get help with that. There's more things to talk about there. But what I'm saying is, it is important. Now, search engine marketing. This is the paid stuff. This is where you can use an investment of advertising and pay Google to rank high. So for example, I've used the screenshot below again of Hutto Texas AC Repair um, and Sponsor. Makes sense. You know, this company, these set of companies paid to be at the very top, right? There's an advantage to that, we get it. It's like buying a billboard on the side of the road. It's like buying any other ad placement. So if you think about it though too, again, how important search is online, I showed the stats earlier, it may be an advantage for you, right? But sometimes you start with SEO first before you go into SEM, meaning that get your foundations done first. I don't think anybody has to jump right into spending money right away. Do the organic stuff, do the stuff that doesn't cost you much, maybe your resource time a little bit, to get a foundation of your website out there. You know, you can do a lot of good work on your own to rank at least at the bottom of the first page. If you got to the first page, congratulations. If you want to go high at some point and do the investment, then you can. But it doesn't mean you have to run away. Because you're also competing with other things, by the way. What you're doing here, it's a bidding process, by the way, with Google Ads. It's called Google Ad Network. These companies who rank here high are paying for that placement, but they're also competing with anybody else wanting that spot. So it doesn't mean that just these two companies, for example, uh, in theory, are paying for that spot. They still look at Google, certain things, the number of reviews you have, the quality of those reviews, the quality of your website, the quality of your reputation of people coming to your website and not leaving. So they're still going to use their algorithm and then put you in a queue, basically, of who's gonna have the top spot or not. And remember, this stuff changes every, every hour, every, every minute even. So just because you were there today, their competitor may jump on top of that later. So you have to be willing to understand that too. It's a bidding process. You pay for so much time and placement, but it can pay off. It absolutely pays off um, if you do it well. So it's paid advertising to promote your local business on Google. Um, it complements your SEO efforts, but it can quickly boost your visibility. And the cost on this kind of um, investment is, is fairly, I'd say low conservatively, depending on how much you do. Next slide. It's a lot cheaper than print advertising, I'll say that. Okay, digital advertising is usually not as expensive. So keyword and ad campaigns. It's selecting relevant keywords for your local business and creating text or display ads to appear in search results. 
You can also do your own banners if you want to, put them up on Google. Um, it depends on what you decide to do as far as that goes, or you just naturally rise to the top. It's called, um, your budget management is setting a monthly budget for your ads. It's on a monthly basis usually. That's kind of practice. Now you're looking at the results in real time. You should look at them every day, every week. See how they're performing. You can absolutely, because it's digital, take things off, turn things on. That's what's great about digital. You don't have to wait uh, to be, you know, hey, I don't like this uh, trend so far. Let's turn it off. But you want to also give it its time. Like I said, this takes time for this stuff to turn into results. So it's not an overnight you know, thing unless you have a viral campaign, which is a totally different story. On Google search and Google ads, it will take time to slowly build, okay? Um, but then know that though, know that you're gonna build something over time and the results will come in and pay itself off. Paying, and you also only pay when someone clicks on your ad. So one thing to understand too is that if they click on your sponsored ad or your website, that's when you actually pay. Um, it's called pay per click. So you're not setting up, you're setting a bid for the real estate, but it's a matter of saying you pay as people go. Um, and then the more that you get traffic, the more you're paying, but the more the ROI should be there. Geo-targeting, so yeah, absolutely, it's all about location. So hopefully your, your customers have the local area on. Um, you can do things uh, as far as when people are in that local area. Maybe you uh, have a 20 mile radius, but you only want customers in the five mile radius that you live in. Okay, great, all right, you can do that. Probably for Huddo, it's probably the entire community, but let's just say you're a larger suburban area or, or city, you can do as localized as you want. You can tell Google, I only want customers within five mile radius, okay? There's an advantage to that too, because it limits your spend, which is your advertising budget. You can control your budget by doing things like that. Um, sometimes it's about the time of day too. There's certain times of day to promote your business versus others for certain days of the week. And you know that based on your seasonality, you know that based on your business uh, you know, flow. Uh, so target that. Say, look, only on Saturdays and Sundays I want to be in the very top rank because those are the days most people search for my business. It's maybe a weekend type of business, right? Maybe a, a restaurant or something. Um, that matters, right? Or you're trying to lift more traffic to your business, let's say a restaurant that's a little bit slower, Mondays and Tuesdays, and that's the day you really pump up the paid advertising because you know what? I don't need to pay on Google to be found on the weekend because a lot of my regulars are already coming. But maybe Monday and Tuesday, it's a little bit slow. I offer that promotion or I tell new people about us and you rank it up higher during those days to get that lift in traffic. So it depends on what your strategy is. But that's what's beautiful about it. You can turn stuff on, turn stuff off, and you don't have to worry about something um, taking forever as far as getting online. Next slide, please. So the Google Ad Network, it, you, know, you definitely have to have an account, you set it up, um, and you can definitely target your audiences based off all kinds of stuff, by the way, not just location, demographics, profile. Let's say you really wanna get the, the for the restaurant example, you only want to get those uh, families out for the night. Well, you have a profile that says that. We want to get the families out for the night. It's family night. Let's target our users that we know have a family, okay? You want to get all the single people out for a night, okay? Single, singles that have shown their pro on profile data, you're single. Let's get them all out for the Huddle Singles Night. I don't know, making that up. Um, local landing pages. So make sure that your landing pages match your content. So this is all about your website, by the way. You have to have a consistent experience for your website with whatever you're putting out there on Google Ads. So if you're speaking to one thing, make sure the website exemplifies it, right? The website should be the, should be like the door is the Google ad. That's the door, that's the window shopping mentality, right? The landing page is now your opportunity to really make it shine. Make that destination spark, right? And make sure it's consistent. You're not saying one thing on Google and something else on the landing page. Because that local landing page is what's also gonna tell Google to rank you higher than your competitors because you have a better experience. And then just, you know, monitor, uh, best practices, make sure you're looking at, you know, what's what's happening, what's working. There's a variety of metrics that you can learn that to, to pay attention to. But at the end of the day, we want to return on investment, right? That's what really matters. Return on investment. Am I making a profit from all this wonderful paid ads? Next slide. Social media. All right, so those are two areas I talked about. Organic search engine optimization that anybody can do and start with, okay? Second is you want to then do that first get that down to a foundational level, then learn how to do paid ads, and get that up and running if you desire. But what really matters is social media. I'm just picking on Facebook, okay? Obviously, we have other channels. Obviously, you can go do TikTok videos and do those really well, right? And especially for a local community, TikTok videos are awesome, by the way, I think. Right, that's, how, that's what lets you stand out amongst your larger competitors, or you know, whatever, if people are in their local area, and you have a great 10, 20 second video, maybe up to a minute, that's awesome, you know, that, that, that really engages your audience, right? You have to do that well, but I think that's a good idea. Dabble into that if you can. You don't have to have 
a big production, you can just use your iPhone, okay? And try it out. That's one avenue I think is really important. But from a being found perspective, so the whole goal is to be found, right? The videos of TikTok can help, but we also know that the very staple is Facebook. Have a Facebook business page, okay? Again, have one minimum. Maintaining it though is actually secondary and very, very important. You have to have your information up to date, no different than Google Pages, right? But if you want to engage with your audience, you have to do a little bit more than just have your information out there, right? And so here's just a ranking of those, uh, Huddo AC repairs as well. Um, and you rank here, uh, the difference in here though is engagement. You're gonna rank higher on the results page because normally of engagement of what you do on social media. The next slide, please. So what do we do? I picked this random company. I wanted to make sure that I didn't embarrass anybody with their uh, company name. I'm not saying this is embarrassing at all, by the way. I'm just saying, I know, disclaimer, I did, I did pick someone in the area. But what do they do? They have, obviously, their information and they have reviews that are five stars. Opportunities to get more, but these are some. So yes, ratings are very important. Encourage your customers to do that on Google and or Facebook. But what I say is start with Google first. Google is probably, I'd rather get more customers to do Google than Facebook, but if they desire to do it on Facebook, awesome. And you can build engagement with that too, by the way. You can do a post that says something like, look, for those who leave a review, we have a sweepstakes, a contest, you get the next month free or whatever discount you want if you want to grow your ratings on here, by the way. And those kinds of sweepstakes and kinds of contests, people love, or right? everybody wants an opportunity to win something. And if you can afford it, I encourage you, because that payoff isn't just giving away that free whatever. It may cost you something, but man, really rich content that other people, new customers, will come and find you because of that tactic. Um, again, making sure all the information is correct. Having a really good intro. Family owned, operated business by Austin Natives. We do business to make relationships. Go on, right? Just make sure you have a really good blurb there. I call it blurb, but you know, written content there. But this is what matters, right? Engagement. Talk about the local community. Talk about the weather if you want to. Talk about something that people resonate with. Tips and tricks. Best practices. You know, if you're a restaurant, give, give some kind of cooking. Maybe you don't distill your recipes, but something around a hot recipe for the month. Right, AC repairs, how about some AC tips? How about um, whatever it is that can give people something to enjoy, right? Sell your business second, give, someone, give content that people enjoy, are entertained by, or will find interesting first. Then sell your business. But you don't have the same thing about your business. They're on your page. If they're, if they're already interacting with you with some kind of great information, then sell your stuff second, okay? This is what warms people up. It's what builds great online relationships. And it may seem like it's a, a uh, a, a very time consuming thing, it, it's actually not. If you spend just enough time mapping it out and planning it for the month, you can schedule these, right? You, these are things you can do, sit down one afternoon and, and do your, if you do once a week minimum, probably is the best practice. If you wanna do two times a week, great. If you wanna do daily, great. But just remember, the more you do though, the more you have to engage back. So part of this is just posting great content, great images, videos, and be very uh, uh, conversational is the word I like to use with your customers. Make sure though you're also responding and they leave comments, positive or negative, right? That's a, pr a public presence there. And sometimes even a negative comment that you get, and they will happen, I'm not trying to say you'll get a lot, but they will. How you respond to that shows the reputation that you take care of your customers. If you're positive with it, you're empathetic to your customers, maybe even apologetic, and you, and you say, look, even if you say to them, look, I'm sorry you had this concern, here's my number or contact me directly, that shows other customers that look, it, you do care. You do have a presence in the community of caring about your local community's uh, business, your business, and also willing to help people if they absolutely need it, right? Leaving comments without any responses looks like you don't care, looks like you're not paying attention, and customers wanna see you care, right? That's in this environment we're in, care is key. Next slide. So engagement again, uh, engage with your audience, respond to messages and comments, be prompt in replying. Doesn't mean you have to do it within a minute, a day, maybe two at most, you know, just keep an eye on it. Get alerts to your phone, right? If you see alert, just, it's kind of like, same thing. How, would you re how long would you wait to respond to an email? Same mentality, right? Uh, show that you value their feedback and inquiries. You know, be empathetic, and, and, and yes, I do believe that not, customers are not always right. I'll say that. Customers have times when they're not right, but acknowledge their view, acknowledge their, be empathetic to what they're saying, and then find their common ground but show that in the online presence. If they're gonna go out there and publicly put something out there, then do that. Now, if they're doing something else, like slander and shame, different story, that's a PR thing, but if it's truly a concern about their business or a review that wasn't positive, 
try to try to make it make it something that you can make a positive experience out of. And learn from it, by the way, right? Your, your comments on social media give you opportunities to learn about how to improve your business. Post regularly, uh, share updates, promotions, news about your business. If you have an employee of the month, share that. If you're talking about where you're gonna be next month at an event, share that, of course. Promotions, absolutely, your sales, deals, do that. But make sure you're not just doing deals and deals and deals. Um, advertising deals is great, but at some point you're just gonna be looked at as like, hey, that's all they want is my money. Engage with them and other stuff, and then let those deals be kind of part of the solution. Discuss their events, and then news around you too, like anything that's important to your industry. Uh, and then again, like everybody loves to learn, so give them like how to how to's, DIY stuff like that. And use visual content. Use videos where you can. Use your own iPhone. You know, videotape something, anything, and people love it. People will stop and watch it. It can be silly. It can be fun, right? It doesn't have to be a big big ordeal. Just something that keeps people excited about your brand. Um, yeah. So next slide, please. So that's social media engagement. Leverage your reviews and then reuse your reviews. Like literally tell people, hey, this customer said this. Repost a positive review, okay? You know, even a review from three months ago, repost that if you're not seeing a lot of traffic, like remind people that there's been others, other customers who enjoy your products. But they use those reviews on other outlets, by the way, your website, your email marketing. Take, take the social media reviews or Google reviews and also put those on other mediums. Reviews and testimonials are a huge deal when it comes to digital marketing. Create events. Actually build events on Facebook. It doesn't have to be in person, like build Facebook events. Build an opportunity to bring people together, right? Community driven stuff, right? Maybe you have a club that you have online, right? I don't know, I'm making this up again, the restaurant, local restaurant. You have this once a month kind of uh, online sharing ideas for recipes or something, I don't know. Um, maybe it's a, you have a, a fitness club. Right, you actually have a uh, fitness club, physical presence, but online you have tips and tricks for home workouts. And you're like, well, that's, that's kind of intuitive because I have, an, I have a physical uh, location. Well, engage people first, have them share ideas about how to work out at home, but then introduce your gym secondary. That will work um, a lot of the time. Get people comfortable with the idea of working out. That's another example. Get people into the mood of your community of what you do, okay? For people who want to go to the local gym, as an example, well, how do you engage people to work out first? Maybe they feel more comfortable doing it at home and then you build a relationship with them and say, look, they come to our gym when you feel comfortable. When you're ready, we're here. Don't, you know, it's a way of just getting people comfortable with what you do. And then share your exclusive deals. Uh, you know, you can have exclusive uh, discounts for Facebook followers. Loyalty programs are kind of like that, of course. And that's a good way to do a loyalty program without a lot of investment, by the way. Use your Facebook followers or any social media followers and let that, be your, that, let, let, let that be your loyalty program. You don't need a big loyalty program to get started. Use your community online that you've already built to your advantage. But create a sense of urgency to encourage action. Obviously, you wanna make sure you're not just doing passive marketing and at some point not asking them to do something. But they're participating in the event, actually buy something. I mean, at some point, you can't just put up a bunch of good stories without asking them to do something in return. But that's a subtle way of doing it. Next slide, please. So bring it all together. Okay, love this picture by the way. I wanna see that before I leave today. Um, these have a lot of things as far as, you know, more detail about how to get these things done. But it's the checklist of success, I'll call it, right? In digital marketing. Establish a strong online presence. Have one first and then build it. It takes time to build, but build an online presence. Optimize your local search engine optimization, which means get found on Google, okay? Utilize Google My Business, build that profile, keep it up to date, get those reviews going. Respond properly to interactions, okay? Don't be afraid, even if it's a hard review to read, talk to your customers. And they may actually acknowledge it, you may actually save a, a client because of it. Next, explore local advertising. And this can be done also with cross-marketing. You know, you guys are partners in this room, I would say, right? That's your, comp your you know, somewhat comp competition, but we like to engage with other businesses too. Have a partnership on something. You know, share each other's traffic with websites. Get someone post and share another business on your Facebook account. Share the love. I love what I'm trying to say, okay? Uh, get involved with your community. I think it makes sense, but do it. Talk about it, though. Put it out there on digital. Give people to know you care. Embrace customer reviews. And then pri uh, prioritize mobile optimization. Just make sure that you have a good mobile-friendly website. It's really what I'm getting down to. Everything else will work. So when you actually build a website, just make sure you're asking the question, is this mobile responsive? or mobile friendly, okay? Because we do know we all like to go on our mobile devices more often than not. 60% of traffic to most websites or more is mobile. 
but be willing to analyze and adapt. And when I say by analyze, by the way, there's some very basic Google Analytics or some very basic metrics we all want to know that we can learn. Obviously, you want to get more in depth. There's other, there's other you know, things you can do. You can hire talent to do that or somebody else to look it up, but we can all understand the importance of measuring performance and adapt. But remember, you have to be patient with this. Unless you have a really good, strong viral campaign, the build in digital is not an overnight ROI. It takes time, but when you do it right and build a track record of success, you're building that presence to an ROI. Uh, next slide. That's it, thank you. If you'd like to get in touch with me, that's my website, that's my email, I have some cards I can pass around. Uh, consultation inquiries, happy to help. Let me know, thank you. Any questions? Can you put that slide back?